Intro to Falling. So in this uh, set of tutorials, we'll be talking about the concept of uh, timing and spacing in animation. So it's uh, one of the fundamental ideas, uh, how motion appears uh, in animation due to the timing and spacing uh, between drawings on frames. Now, it's uh, such a basic uh, concept that it's right near the top of the list of the principles of animation from the, from the illusion of life. So if you've done any animation, you're very familiar with these principles. And uh, in this uh, set of tutorials, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the example of a falling motion like a uh, falling uh, baseball. And uh, this is a particularly uh, simple case because the uh, drawings, you could do them as, as you see here, uh, having the object just be exactly the same uh, on each frame. Uh, but then the challenge for making believable motion is what is the uh, spacing from drawing uh, to drawing. Now, uh, the ball drop or ball bounce is uh, presented as a fundamental exercise in pretty much uh, every uh, major book that is uh, teaching animation. So, and uh, you know, we could ask why? Why is this so important? Well. Uh, if, uh, if you can master the principles of timing and spacing to create a believable drop, ball drop, then uh, these extend to more interesting types of animated motion, uh, such as in, in character animation for a jumping character or uh, moving uh, effects animations uh, like a stream of water, uh, so forth. So, uh, especially since uh, often the uh, the drawings are very simple for a um, uh, ball drop or a ball bounce. So the challenge is not your drawing skills, but uh, establishing timing and spacing. Now, uh, there's various ways of measuring time in uh, animation. There's uh, counting frames. Uh, frames are typically uh, 1 24th of a second in in animation. Uh, you can also count uh, keys or key poses uh, or drawings. So, uh, and then finally, you can think about time in terms of actual seconds as if they were measured on a, on a clock. And, and uh, animators will typically use uh, all of these. Um, they might use a stopwatch to plan how many seconds would be in a scene and uh, convert that roughly into number of frames and then decide on how many keys uh, they will uh, have in that um, uh, in that shot. So uh, here's an example of that. Here's uh, some key poses in a jump. And let's say that uh, this was the set of keys uh, for an animation that was shot on threes. That is, uh, there's three frames uh, between each drawing. So we have this first uh, pose, and then three frames later the second one, three frames later the next one, and so forth. Uh, now, uh, animators sometimes will vary uh, the number of frames between keys. Uh, in the examples in these tutorials, just to keep uh, things simple, uh, I'll always be uh, having an equal number of frames uh, between each key. Now, the frame rate, as I mentioned, is um, typically 24 frames per second. That's the standard used in film. Another common frame rate that you will encounter, uh, especially if you shoot video reference, is uh, most video cameras shoot at 30 frames per second. So. Uh, that's a simple um, conversion from number of frames of film to number of frames of, of video. And, and these frame rates are 
somewhat similar, so um, uh, we won't uh, spend too much time uh, worrying about those. Now, uh, in planning an animation, in terms of uh, timing and spacing for drawings, uh, in traditional animation especially, uh, they uh, use these uh, dope sheets or exposure sheets or, or X sheets. And uh, the idea here is to have a tabulation that tells you uh, which drawing goes on which uh, frame. So in that example of a uh, jump that was shot on threes, uh, this first drawing say goes on frame one, and then three frames later the second key uh, is on frame four, and then the third key is three frames later on frame seven, uh, so forth. So getting back to the to the ball drop, let's say that you uh, wanted to do a ball drop from a height of about four feet. So then uh, you uh, shoot some reference or use a stopwatch and you realize that it takes about half a second for the ball to uh, hit the ground from a height of uh, four feet. So that would be uh, 12 frames. Then if you're uh, shooting on twos, uh, your dope sheet would look something like this. The first um, key drawing uh, is at the uh, start, at the apex. And then uh, 12 frames later, uh, the ball hits the ground. And since you're shooting on two, that would be uh, drawing number seven. Uh, but of course, now the question is, where are the other drawings? You know, where do you place them? Uh, that's where the the spacing uh, question uh, comes up. So we'll be looking in the next couple of tutorials at a few ways to create a believable ball drop, uh, whether you're working in, in traditional uh, hand-drawn cell uh, animation or uh, CG uh, computer graphics animation, or even in uh, stop motion animation. These concepts will all be useful. So in, uh, in summary, uh, falling motion is an important basic uh, exercise for learning animation. Uh, timing and spacing fundamentally define motion. Uh, time can be measured in terms of frames, uh, key poses, or uh, seconds on a clock. And that uh, we'll be spending the next few tutorials uh, looking at a variety of ways to create a uh, believable spacing for falling motion. So uh, we'll, uh, I'll see you then.